Perfect. Let's call the meeting to order at 5.03 p.m. Uh, and uh, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming to today's Port Ranch Neighborhood Council meeting. My name is Gabriel Kellen. I'm the president of the council. I have a few announcements to make. This meeting is being recorded and the recording will be available on our PRNC YouTube page, as well as our webpage, prnc.org. All meeting attendees will be automatically muted when they join the meeting. Attendees may address the board in one of two situations. Number one, comment on an agenda item, or number two, provide general public comment. After each agenda item is read out loud and before a board vote is taken on that item, if any, I'll ask if any member of the public wishes to address the board regarding the agenda item being considered. At that time, the meeting attendees can electronically raise their hand to speak by pressing star nine if they are using a telephone for audio or clicking their raise your hand button on Zoom. That will prompt the presiding officer or the president that you wish to speak. I will go down the list of those who raise their hand, turn on their audio one at a time, and ask him or her to go ahead and provide comment within a specific period of time. When the speaker's time has expired, I will let the speaker know that their time has expired, thank them for their comment, and turn off the audio for that speaker. This process will continue until all attendees who raised their hand spoke. At that time, the board will discuss the motion and take a vote if they choose so. As noted in the meeting agenda, there is an item dedicated to public comment on, this, on items not on the agenda, but within the purview of the board. When the item comes up during the course of the meeting, I will ask if any member of the public wishes to address the board regarding any issue that is not on the agenda, but is within the domain of the board's action and capabilities. At that time, the meeting attendees can electronically raise their hand to speak using the same procedures described above. Please note that under Brown Act, the board is prevented from discussing or acting on a matter that is brought to its attention during the general public comment period. However, the issue raised by a member of the public may become the subject of a future board meeting. Public comment is limited to two minutes per speaker unless adjusted by the presiding officer at his or her uh, discretion. Let's move on uh, to roll call, Becky. Okay, um, David Balin, absent. Uh, Hilda, Sarge here, I'm here. Present, Jason Hector. Here. Luis Ramirez, absent. Uh, Becky Levesque, present. Brandy Grace, absent. Jennifer Ibrahim uh, is present. Here. Uh, Voss Singh. Here. Christine Demertian, absent, and Gabriel Conlian. Here. Okay, we have quorum. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. If everybody can raise up, put your hand on your heart, and let's begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag. of the United, United States, States of America, America. America. and to the Republic, the Republic of which it stands. One nation, One nation under, under God, God indivisible, indivisible with liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Next item is president's comments. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone for coming to today's meeting. I want to start off today's meeting by a moment of silence in honor of LAPD Devonshire Captain Burns' husband, John, who passed away on June 15, 2022. If we can put our head down for a few moments before we start the meeting, that'll be appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Next, um, I have a quick announcement to make. Uh, everybody who is here today is invited to the to attend the Chatsworth Porter Ranch Chambers. There's a meet and greet going on there, and it's being held at the Los Toros restaurant right after this meeting at 6 p.m. I want to make that announcement. Next item is item number six, updates from representatives of elected officials and city departments. Anyone here? Please raise your hand. 
No, thank you. Let's move on to item number seven, public comments on items not on the agenda within the purview of the board. Please raise your hand if you have a public comment. Nikki, the floor is yours. Hi, good evening. Um, hi, Nikki Loy, um, a volunteer from um, Demonshire um, Division Community Relations Office. Just wanted to make a quick announcement. Um, Officer Parker's um, basic car meeting is on July the 12th. I know part of Porter Ranch um, is within a, a, a 35, and it will be from 5 p.m. at B Canyon Park. Um, also, July 13th, um, Valley Traffic Division. This is the second Wednesday of the month at 6.30. Valley Traffic Division usually holds a um, webinar with their captain. And um, last month, um, I think they were busy with the um, Summit of Americas, and they did not have the meeting, but I hope they will be back. Um, sometimes they do not put out a flyer, but I'd like everybody to, if you're available, to keep that in mind, that date in mind. The webinar ID is 890-1040-5844. It's a recurring Zoom link. It's a webinar format. Um, also, July 22nd, there is a Red Cross blood donation at um, LAPD Demonstrate Pals, July 22nd from 10 to 4 p.m. If you go to redcrossblood.org and the sponsor code is LAPD Demonshire, um, you'll be able to see what um, scheduling or the days are um, times are open. I'll, Gabriel, I'm sorry, I was late on all this, so I'll send you the um, no for the ones yeah. that I have. Yeah. Also, um, just a reminder, July 11th, um, CERC class that was put together by LAPD Demonshire Community Relations Office is starting. Um, it's full. Um, right now, so very the officers are very excited. As you know, the LAPD Demonstrator officers would like everybody to be ready in case there is a, um, whether it's a man-made or a natural disaster, so um, you can help yourselves, but also help your neighbors. And also help LAFD, LAPD, and the EMTs by being ready, because it does um, make a huge difference when you're ready, and I'm sure Dave Brown will be talking about, might be talking about it later. But um, that's all, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Mickey. Uh, Mickey? Yes. Okay, I have a question. Can you give me one more time the link uh, for the July 13th webinar? Oh, the webinar for the Valley Traffic Division? Yeah. Yes, it is 890-1040-5844. Is there any password? No, this is a webinar. So okay. um, that would be the webinar ID once okay. you go on to Zoom. Thank you, I appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, Asad, floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, uh, members of the board. Uh, I wanted uh, two items, actually. The first one is on, on behalf of the community, uh, we submit our condolences to Captain Burns for the loss of her husband. And I believe tomorrow is going to be the uh, burial and memorial services for uh, for her husband. And two, I would like to thank LAPD Devonshire for the excellent job they did on 4th of July celebration, in which we had a lot of firework incidents at the Holly Burnson Park. And then when their response time to stop it was very quick. Within a few minutes of giving them a call, they were at the grounds and stop the people from doing the fireworks. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Asad. Glenn Bailey, floor is yours. Glenn? Okay. Sorry. There you go. Perfect. Slow getting to the unmute button. Uh, Glenn right. Bailey, uh, first of all, I just wanted to everyone know that the Valley Alliance and Neighborhood Councils meets next Thursday. Um, subject to any further changes, because there was one already, uh, the LAUSD superintendent, new superintendent is scheduled to meet with the Valley Neighborhood Councils at that meeting. So any of you have a particular interest in, in the uh, LAUSD schools in your area or in general, um, you know, you're welcome to attend that meeting 630 
a week from this Thursday, it's the same Zoom ID each time. Um, do watch for the agenda because sometimes these speaker schedules get changed at the last minute and it's beyond our control, but we do have it in writing that uh, for, for then. Um, secondly, switching my hat to the North Regis Neighborhood Council, one of the eight neighborhood councils in region two, the Northwest Valley, and one of the six neighborhood councils that will be holding, uh, participating in the election cycle in 2023. Um, we did vote at our last board meeting to uh, support uh, the six neighborhood councils that are participating in the election process to work on some regional efforts. Because as you, some of you may know that in the past, like quite a while ago, a number of elect election cycles ago, there used to be a set up a process where all the neighborhood councils within the region work together in terms of joint outreach, publicity, um, events, et cetera, all gov governing toward uh, recruiting candidates and voters for the upcoming election. So I just wanted to mention that to you um, and hopefully you'd be willing to participate. I realize that may have to go through your committee and to the board, but on the other hand, I also think that um, we could do it just because, you know, we're all in the same region. We all have the same um, June 10th election day. And so, um, you know, the sooner we get started with that conversation, the better, in my opinion. And there are more details, but I won't take time right now to go over them. So um, you can, you know how to reach me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Glenn. All right, with no, actually I see a board of us. Yeah, my question for Glenn. Uh, hi, Glenn. One second. Go ahead, boss. Okay. Okay, Glenn, my question is, can you give me the name of these six neighborhood council alliance? Well, it's not an alliance, but it is the six neighbor councils in region two. So Porter Ranch, North Ridge West, North Ridge East, Garada Hills North, Garada Hills South, and North Hills West. Those are the six that are in the election queue for 2023. Okay. Um, there is, of course, also Chatsworth Neighbor Council and North Ridge South Neighbor Council, but they use the selection process. So they're not oh. going to be. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Just note, guys, that this is a public comment. Board usually can't ask questions, but uh, due to circumstances, I'm allowing it. Becky? Oh, okay. Thank you. Just, uh, Glenn, could you tell us what the date of the bank meeting is? It's next Thursday, but do you happen to know the date? Uh, July 14th. Thank you. <laughs> July 14th, one week from tonight, 6.30. Thank you. Thank you, and Hilda? Oh, it's very related to what Becky said or okay. asked. Um, 6.30, July 14, but um, like, um, are we gonna get an email as far as so I can sign in and listen or is it a Zoom or no? It is on Zoom until further notice. Oh, um, I mm -hmm. um, so I do know that they've included the president of each neighbor council in addition oh. to those of you who have attended event meetings or events in the past. Oh, okay, if, okay. If you ever went to CBS News, but if you're not getting, if you're a newer board member, you're not getting it. Um, if you send an email to vanc, V A N C, at empowerla.org and ask to be added to the email list. Um, but you can go to the Neighbor Council Alliances webpage on the link, L A N C C.org, and down at the bottom, it's alphabetical. So down at the bottom for V's, uh, you can see the last agenda, and it's the same Zoom meeting ID. I don't have it with me right now, although some. No problem. Might. Thank you so much, though. Thank you. We can get it to you. Thanks. Of course. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Let's go to agenda item number eight, discussing a partial action to approve $2,000 NPG to Southern California Preparedness Foundation to purchase backpacks containing essential and, val and valuable response supplies to each course participant who completes all seven sessions of CERT classes being offered in Port Ranch at the Vineyard starting July 7 for seven Mondays. Uh, this item was voted last month, but due to time constraint, uh, we were not able to make the payment, so we are basically revoting on it today. I'll uh, second it. Thank you. One second. And then let me bring in Dave real quick. Dave, you want to add a little bit about it? Uh, yes. Uh, starting, uh, it sold out as Mickey relayed. Uh, 
congratulations, but not unexpectedly because we've had two years with COVID that there have been zero CERT classes. So there's a big pent up demand. We anticipate going forward that every CERT class will be at maximum capacity, which currently is being scheduled at 60. Um, Waitlist walk-ins are routinely accepted. We'll see what that turns out to be, of course. Uh, starts July 11th at the Vineyard, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. for seven uh, Mondays. The last one being Monday, August 22nd. Um, students need to complete all seven classes, either attending this particular scheduled class or attend a if they miss one, another CERT class, there's four of them that'll be going in the Valley. So there'll be ample opportunities if they miss a class to fulfill attending all seven classes. That's how they complete the requirements to be awarded a uh, course completion backpack at the conclusion at the final class. Uh, the MPG in front of you, thank you for accepting it. Uh, what the foundation tries to do, because we're not doing the disaster fair in person, um, but we're geared up to support CERT, at, um, and we think it's absolutely wonderful, as do most people once they learn about it. Um, we like to get a buy-in with the Geographic Neighborhood Council, ideally 50%, share 50-50 the cost of the completion backpacks, uh, which like everything has gone up in price. Uh, current estimate is $6,000 to $6,500 for this particular class. If the instructor accepts more people, 65, 70 people, of course, the cat cost will go up. But uh, the MPG in front of you is for 2000 uh, You know, if we were confident when we originated this MPG, it would have been for 3000 but this is fine. The, in all cases, the foundation will make up any financial difference. In other words, um, say it goes to 70 students and each one perfectly attended, so there's 70 backpacks, so that'd be $7,000. The foundation stands ready to make up the cost of that as well as administer the physical uh, ordering, pickup, delivery to the final class, make sure everybody gets one, you know, get a receipt that uh, who got what so that it's not confusing. Uh, more confusing or more complicated or people that have to do a makeup class. We track those, make sure they make up their class. We very much encourage them to do that because we want them to get a backpack. And the net result of these backpacks is you have some very motivated recent graduates that hopefully will go on to spread the word, get other people to take their classes. Hopefully they'll continue their education. This isn't going to make anybody prepared. This just gets them, introduces them to the general topic and prepares them to learn and, and shows them where to go to learn. So it's a it's a wonderful thing, very cost effective. And we uh, we very much look forward to doing it. Um, Thank you. I missed anything. Uh, feel free to ask questions. Perfect. Thank you. Assad, you have a question? The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Dave, uh, this is a great uh, opportunity to get more people trained. Uh, my question is, do you have a current list of all trained level one and level twos? Or if not, maybe we should have one so that if any, when anything happens, at least we can uh, reach out to them. Thank you, Dave. Um, yes, Assad, you hit a very sore nails precisely on the head. That uh, CERT class graduate information, attendee contact info, is uh, religiously guarded by the fire department and not available to anybody directly outside the fire department. That has been an ongoing issue for those of us wanting to <clears throat> assemble uh, CERT graduates in our immediate local areas. So. Uh, Basically, to solve that to a large extent, NTP, the Neighborhood Team Program, which is composed primarily of CERT graduates, um, has put the word out that if you've ever taken a CERT class, please make contact. We would like to welcome you into the Neighborhood Team Program. It's not CERT. <clears throat> it's a volunteer standalone operation, but that's how we're gathering former graduates. Now, of course, there's nothing to stop you from attending a CERT class um, re 
requesting of the instructor, may I give a brief presentation about NTP and put out a clipboard with a sign-up sheet that uh, anybody interested could, uh, following their training, uh, participate in NTP. And that's how we're gathering CERT attendees and geographically uh, allocating them to their various local battalion division and giving them a great opportunity for additional easy training, not, not rigorous training, because these are beginning people. And if you give them too much too fast, they choke and, and back off. So we make it as easy as possible for them to learn about radios, FRS, TMRS, maybe ham radio. Um, but that's how we're gathering former CERT graduates because uh, perhaps legally, the fire department cannot provide that information. So we are on our own reaching out and it's working. We've, we've probably got um, approaching a significant number. Uh, the typical monthly NTP meeting is hitting five to 700 people now. And uh, most of which are former CERT one class attendees. So we're, we're very encouraged by that. Excellent. So maybe you could have something, yeah, for at least Porter Ranch. So that this way it will be readily available to the board and uh, along those lines. Uh, that is Pat Hall and Glenn Dollar. They, they are our battalion coordinators for our area, uh, which includes Porter Ranch. So let me make sure you, because you're chairing the public safety committee, right? Right. Yeah, let me Devonshire LAPD. Yes, let me make sure that you are uh, directly in connection with them, because uh, uh, there's only there's only good things that are going to come from this. There's no negative downside. So uh, yeah, the more we get those, and ideally some of those CERT graduates, former and perhaps current from this class, can join in too. Um, Devonshire volunteer opportunities. Uh, many thanks to uh, the Crow Office for uh, facilitating this. This this is a big deal. Excellent, and I'll share that with Gabriel and Becky, so that this way you know uh, we're all in on the same page. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Asad. Thank you, Mickey. Floor is yours. I um thank you. I just wanted to add to that, um, if I may, um, Battalion Fifteen. Um, coordinators or actually all CERT classes or battalion meetings are all open to the public regardless of whether you're a CERT graduate or not. So if you do sign up or just um, go, go to the CERT website and look for community meetings. If you find a battalion community meeting going on, um, just click on the link and see how you can, um, a lot of times they do require, um, ask you to respond by Eventbrite, but there, that's another way to um, attend these meetings. And what they do is they take one subject at a time and they may go over it. Um, they may go over um, first aid, very basic, very basic, or how to use a radio. So that's another way of um, bringing, um, going beyond what you've learned at CERT, or if you haven't been to a CERT class, you can still go attend and learn. Thank, Thank you, Mickey. Uh, any uh, another question, Jason? Yeah, um, I, I I was one of the graduates from CERT, and um, I just want to say, you know, it's a lot of classes, but it, it is well worth it. And um, luckily, I haven't had to use it, but um, it does inspire you to continue to learn. I, I have gone on and gotten CPR, first aid, AED. Um, I have my OSHA thirty. So I, I just encourage all, it would be nice if as many people um, get their cert. Hopefully you'll never have to use it, but I mean, I really got it just because you never know when it might come in handy. And now I like feel confident about CPR and things like that, whereas before I wasn't. And you never know what, where you might be. You might, might be out in the middle of nowhere, you know, out in the wilderness and save somebody's life. You know, you just never know. So I think it's a really, um, I'm glad that we're having it here. I, I took it in Porter Ranch with um, Balin, but um, I'd like to know if any other board members um, are taking it or have cert, because um, I think it's important to like know uh, amongst ourselves, like who um, 
is trained. And I think that maybe a Facebook group or something would be a simple way to kind of, um, you know, it's a good point that was brought up um, about graduates working together. So that's all. I just wanted to share a few, few comments. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Uh, Hilda? I just want to tell everyone that I will be there. I Perfect. registered. Yay! <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Oh, Jan, Be Becky? Uh, maybe uh, in response to what Jason said, uh, on our website, we could put underneath each board member's name if they are cer certified. Just a suggestion. Thank you, Becky. With no further comments and questions, uh, Becky, you want to call the vote? Um, David Balin, absent. We made the motion already, I take it, right? Yeah, we have a motion, we have a second. Oh, thank you. Sorry. Um, Hilda Sarkisian? Yes. Okay, hold on. Jason Hector? Yes. Luis Ramirez is absent. Uh, Becky Levesque? Yes. Brandy Grace is absent. Jennifer Ibrahim? Yes. Okay. Voss Singh? Yes. Christine Demerchian is absent. And Gabriel Conlian? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Um, it passes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dave. Oh, we got a hand raise. Hopefully, the city clerk will. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Now we just got to get to the city clerk. Okay, <laughs> so we'll I sent it. her an email about the budget and I got no response. So, but anyways, we'll work. Thank, right. thank you, everybody. To add a human interest side to this, um, as Jason was saying about learning more, following, taking a cert one class, uh, when I was younger, uh, and to this date, one of the scariest things that ever happened to me in my personal life is I was the only person available to uh, help deliver a baby. Oh. And, I didn't know anything and it, it terrified me. I was afraid the baby was die, the mother would die. I was probably gonna die, who knows, but uh, uh, everybody lived. Uh, but right then and there, I swore I would never ever be in a position of not knowing what to do in something that critical. And uh, I didn't even know about CERT. I just started taking Red Cross classes. But uh, eventually, once you find out about CERT, um, one of my favorites, and it's available here in the Valley, Aaron Huey, one of the premier instructors in the Valley, uh, intermittently at various times throughout the year, offers a EMR class, which used to be considered CERT 3. It's now uh, EMR. I highly recommend not only that class, but particularly from her as an instructor, if you have the opportunity. Uh, it's a commitment, but uh, it'll pay huge dividends. So again, thank you very much. And, uh, Thank you, Dave. I have. A, I think Glenn might have a question or comment. Just hang on for one second, just in case. Sure. Glenn, the floor is yours. Yes, just a friendly reminder on all votes, especially funding items, to call out the actual vote tally, the number of yes, no, and abstains. Thank you. Got it. It's it was six yeses, four absences, and that's it. Thanks, Glenn. Thank you, Glenn. All right, let's move on to item number nine. Uh, Vas, floor is yours. Okay. So as uh, you all may be aware that- Zoom City in. Council, uh, pardon me? Sorry, Vas. Okay. Zoom in a little bit so we can see it. Thanks. There you go. Okay. So as you are all aware that City Council has announced a return to in-person City Council meetings, the City Council announced that uh, its meeting will continue to be accessible online. Since there will be, there will continue to be medical requirements for admission to the city hall, this policy of restricting public comment to people who attend in person is discriminatory to those without medical documents or with compromised immune system. In addition, it discourages comments from those who have limited hours available during the work week. Mm -hmm. For a city that takes pride in being an environmental leader, it will create many hours of auto trips downtown for the sole purpose of making a one minute public comment. At its meeting on May 12, 2022, the Bank Valley Alliance of Neighborhood Council unanimously adopted the following resolution that urges reinstatement of remote public comment 
and they urged the ANCs to write a letter to the local city council member with the name of the our NC. So the motion is the Porter and Neighborhood Council requests that city council again allow participation in city council meetings by telephone or online means in addition to in-person public comment. And I urge you to please pass this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Vas. You want to make the motion as written on I, the I, agenda? I will make the motion to approve. No, may, read it as it's stated on the agenda. Yeah. I don't yeah. Remember okay. Motion, discussion, and possible action to write a letter to John Lee City Council member CD12, and I move. Do we have a second? Second? I'll second. Thank you, Hilda. And I have a comment or a question from Jason. Floor is there, Jason? Uh, I, I don't understand. So the where's the letter? Which letter? Well, it says the, the in your motion is to write a letter, right? Yes. Okay, where's the letter though? The letter we'll make later on, like after the motion is approved, because this is just a motion matter which we have to approve and send it to John Lee. I know, but what is the letter going to contain? The same thing. The Porter and Neighborhood Council requests that City Council again allow remote participation in City Council meeting by telephone or online means in addition to in-person public comment. I, you're reading from something. I don't understand what, what the letter, the contents of the letter. The letter, a letter is like, you know, dear Councilman Lee, we're writing you here today to explain to you, blah, 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 right? That's how you write a letter, right? So is it a specific paragraph that is gonna be the content of the letter? I mean, I understand it's going to John Lee. I just don't see any letters, so it's very... Yeah, it will be in the formal, formal letter and this will be the main uh, material in that one, which will urge the John Lee <laughs> to take it to the city council. You know, this language is coming from someone else. It says that it, we're discriminatory. Um, it's accusing City Hall of discrimination. Um, you know, it's a little bit um, of a legal matter when you're saying that you're accusing somebody of being discriminatory, right? You have discrimination lawsuits and things like that. So I'm, I'm just having a... Um, we pass a motion, that's fine, but if there's a letter, I'd like to know what the content of the letter is gonna have specifically. Same thing with the CIS. You know, I do the CISs among other people and I need to know like exactly what the body of the CIS is gonna be. You know, so that's the thing. I, I don't know what the body of the letter is gonna be. Um, if you could, if you could highlight it or some, show me something, then no, I would, don't have that, that at this moment. I don't have that one, but this is the body of the motion which we will be forwarding. No, the this is a motion, but the motion is to send a letter. Yes. Okay. Never mind. We're not going to get anywhere. Okay. Thank you, <laughs> Becky. Hi. Um. Just to kind of tag on to that. Um. Personally, um. I'm in favor of this motion but I'd like to see the letter in its actual form that we are going to send uh, before we approve it or before um, we send it. I'd like to see the whole letter and what it looks like. I see the reasoning and, and I do agree. Um, LA is a very large city and for someone to go down and make a one minute presentation, it, it's a lot of work for the city. It's a lot of work for the person who's giving that statement. But I would, um, I am in favor of the motion, but I would like to see the letter and I'd like the board to see the letter in its entirety as it's written before it's sent. So and in that case, fine. I Thank will, you. sorry, sorry, please okay. go ahead. In that case, I would like this motion to be carried to the next uh, board meeting on August 10. This one and CIS both. Okay. And, wanna... and I just wanna say that I do, I do agree I'm sorry, I didn't get to say this. I do agree, like Becky said, 
that it is a imposition trying to get downtown. It's a freaking nightmare. I've done it. And, you know, we should really be um, making a good thing out of COVID through these virtual meetings now. So I do support it. I have some issues with the discriminatory language. I think that should be run through city attorney. If you're going to say something like, you know, if you're going to make an assertion like this, this, this first paragraph is, I think you need to check with the city attorney on that, but I, I'm sorry. I just want to make those last comments. No, no problem. But Thank for you. your information, this uh, body of the matter has been sent by us to the, by the bank. And this was decided at their meeting. So this is exactly what they have written in their email. But we yeah, that's their language. But if yeah. we're going to send something from yeah. us, then yeah. and it's and it's accusing City Hall of discrimination. That's very, uh, you know, that's a legal, that's a legal assertion. So we can forward the matter to the city attorney Just and keep if that in mind. It, yeah. Next time, if you bring something, I think that that you, you need to, you know, do you have grounds to accuse them of that? Can you say that? You know, that, those would be my questions if this comes back with that kind of language. Thank Got you. It. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Glenn Bailey. Glenn, the floor is yours. You hear me? Yes, go for it. Okay. Yeah, the discriminate, the word discriminatory. So yes, and this has come through Palestine and I think through the LA Neighbor Council Coalition. Obviously, you can use whatever wording you'd like. And if you have a better word than discriminatory, certainly plug that in. But it is about people with immune compromised um, systems who are not able to participate in the, um, you know, in the public comment by having to be in person. Um, so I just want to throw that in. My main comment was, though, uh, thanks for bringing this up. That's great. Um, uh, I am also encouraging the Valley Neighborhood Councils, and it could be a standalone motion, if you wish. But, you know, we used to be able to uh, uh, it, uh, go to Van Nuys City Hall to be able to do public comments. So it's still a trip, and it's still not as convenient as doing it by phone or via Zoom. But still, you know, it seems like City Hall has forgotten about the Valley and forgotten about that they've got a Van Nuys City Hall and providing that opportunity for folks who um, may want to take advantage of that. So just something to think about uh, either in, to incorporate with this motion or possibly a separate one. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. Voss, uh, yeah. what would you like to do? Yeah, I will carry to the forward to the next board meeting on August 10, this one and the CIS, the next point. Well, let's, we'll talk about the CIS after this one. So this okay. one, I'll, sec <clears throat> I'll second it and we'll table it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You, you know, instead of discriminatory, you could use words like unnecessarily burden, you know, or, you know, other kind of language. Thank you. All right, Voss, the next one is item number 10, uh, the CIS, and you make a move, you make a motion to uh, table this one, you said? Yes, I can make the motion, but I don't have the, anything on the latter head or the precisely. Can you, but, uh, can you pull it up so we can look at it? Because I, I can help to kind of see if it looks like it's in the right format. I took a look at it earlier. Yeah, as long as you have the council file there and then you put um, oppose, so in opposition of was fine. And then what you do is you put what the text is, there's a text box. So instead of, co instead of like copying and pasting what the alliances said, try and tailor it to our community in some way, you know? the Porter Ranch community members now have to drive 45 minutes or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then be, and just put the body text. Okay. There's a, there's a box. I could put like a thousand words or you can attach a letter. What right. you can do is you can just attach the letter. Okay. So if you're sending a letter to John Lee, the CIS, you can just attach the letter and do a paragraph and just put like body text. And that would be, and that's it. Right. Okay. Thank you, Jason. So, Vas, are you moving to table this? Uh, yes, to the next board meeting, yes. Thank you. Thank I'll you. second that tabling. And then if Jason, if you can work with Vas, if he has any questions, I know you're great at CISs. That yeah, and great. like we can appoint people to be able to file a CIS. So if there's any other board members who um, I think right now, maybe we should redo that up to five people can file CISs. 
So if there's somebody who also wants to do it, because I've been doing it in the past, but I'd like to have other board members who have passwords, especially Voss, if you're doing a CIS, then maybe you should um, also do a separate motion to appoint board members, up to five board members to file CISs on behalf of the Neighborhood Council okay. as a separate Thank motion. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Let's go to item number 11. Jason, floor is yours. Oh, it's just the keep LA um, beautiful. Yeah, okay, correct. Um, so, you know, we're in the next fiscal year, so I just wanted to um, provide an update. So the grant, um, right, it, it has been approved and um, it's for the parks to do uh, repainting the trash cans, that green, that kind of um, forest green or whatever you call it. And then um, to put the dog waste bag dispenser, you know, those boxes in um, Aliso Canyon Park. So I was talking with Mirka at CD12 and, and we were thinking um, Lime Kiln Canyon already has one in the front. So we were thinking Aliso Canyon Park and um, Wilbur Tampa Park, because right now they don't have anything. A lot of people walk their dogs at Aliso Park and um, the city's gonna, meaning Rex and Parks is gonna require a sign be put up there that says um, that the bags are maintained or refilled by the neighborhood council. So that'll be like a separate um, thing we'll have to purchase, but that should be um, able to take the funding. We got a grant funded, I think it's like $1,300. So we have that money to work with. And then we match in kind. There may be a few small uh, purchases that we may need to run through the council, but I'll have to put a new motion through because now we're in the new fiscal year. So I just wanted to kind of give everybody an update. Um, we also were looking at repairing the benches in um, Lime Kiln, you know, when you cross the stream, like the second stream crossing, there's some benches there. Um, that, was, that was also part of it, um, but basically that's kind of like not even their benches. So they're just kind of like, oh, okay, well, you know. <laughs> so that's kind of the response I got from um, Rex and Parks. Not that you can't do it, but it's not our benches anyway. So, you know. So anyways, those are the three components of the grant. There's no plaque. It's just painting the trash cans, putting the dog waste bag dispenser holders up with the sign and then we, we would be buying the bags and things like that. And I would be, you know, in, in helping to keep those filled up. And then um, the benches, I don't know if you guys have seen those benches, but they're basically four posts now. So there's, they just rotted away. So now um, they need like to be repaired. So that's the update. Um, we're waiting right now on permission from uh, Rex and Parks for one of the things, uh, CD12 will issue the permits, I think, to put the dog waste bag dispensers up. But there was one thing CD12 an issue, but there's another thing Rex and Parks needs to get a um, an entry permit. So we're just waiting on that last thing. So that's kind of where we're at. Hopefully by next month, um, we'll have like a little more progress, be ready to, you know, get all our volunteers out there and do the fun part. Of the, of the project so that's about it unless there's any questions i just wanted to um keep since we have new board members and everything keep everybody kind of up to date even though this has been lingering on thank you jason any questions for him comments since september this one got approved september of last year so we're still a lot of it is my fault i'm dragging my feet on some things but now it's like Good. You're back. Yeah. Thank you, Jason. Let's see. We have a Q and A. Anything in there? Wrong. Uh, there's back. one person. A public uh, made a comment saying pretty much to confirm the CIS uh, council file. Oh, the council file. Okay. So just Voss, just check the council file number. Make sure it's correct when we. Yeah. Presently, I, I have this is a number which I have been given. But if the person asking us has any other number, maybe we can cross check well, that one. You need to go to the council file management. Yeah, that way we'll go there and find out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And research it. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 12, uh, it's an announcement. I'm announcing that David Lasher oh. did resign. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I have an announcement. Go ahead. Yeah, David yeah. David Lasher did resign from Port Ranch Neighborhood Council. We do have one open seat. It is for, I believe, 10 months. 
uh, at the seat is up 2023. Uh, applications are going to be due August 10, 2022, and we will vote on a new board member on September 14, 2022. And then next item is another quick announcement that the July 13 regular board meeting is canceled and the following meeting will be August 10, 2022, which is the same day as the applications are due. Uh, number four, item number 14, updates from board members and committees. And I see Becky, you have, you have your hand up, go for it. Um, yeah, I had a question um, about um, item number 12 on the agenda regarding um, uh, David, David Lash's resignation. Um, okay. Are we going to put a call out for people to submit applications? On our uh, yes, it's, all, it's already on our website. The applications are available on our website. And uh, can we, if anybody emails secretary at prnc.org, an application will be sent to them as well. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you. Jason? Oh, I just wanted to let um, the board know because uh, you guys appointed me as a uh, regional grievance panelist. So I went through the first, uh, well, I think it's the one training session. Um, there are some other people there that I know, like Glenn and uh, Brian Allen, I think was there too. But um, it was a very good session and um, we learned about all the um the rules and and things and there's another package that's going out um but you know there's there's going to be more training to come but this was kind of a like a two hour long session but it was nice because we got to ask a lot of questions um one of the things that came up is like about um public comment is not supposed to be taken into consideration um, that you're supposed to just go off of the statements made by, um, you know, the response, the formal statements. Uh, that was kind of a, a thing that came up quite a bit, but um, I just wanted to keep you guys in the loop that I did go through that um, training. And um, just so you know, you can represent one person and it doesn't necessarily have to be a board member. Um, and then I would be that person unless it was changed. If I left the board, then you would be able to appoint a new person um, or you could always change, but um, that's kind of how it works. And it doesn't have to be actually a, a board member. It can be a stakeholder, but it has to be appointed by the board. Copy that. Thank you. Any other board member comments? No, with no further comment, let's go to item number 14. Actually, item number 15. Uh, next meeting is on August 10, 2022 at 6 15 p.m. And uh, with no further comment or objection, let's call the meeting, closing the meeting at 5 50 p.m. Thank you, everyone, for coming to today's meeting. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night, Good night. everyone.